Today, we're going to compare cannabis retail outlets in the Canadian marketplace with a report from Headset. After October 2018, Canada became the first G7 to federally legalize cannabis with national laws and regulations that would allow LPs to ship products from coast to coast. This creates some level of consistency across the Canadian market, but there's still some differences between providences. This is mainly because during legalization in Canada, providences were able to self-determine what level of involvement that they would have in the retail and distribution sectors across the cannabis industry, creating several different types of providences like completely run providences. Uh, provincially run or completely private or a hybrid model. So we're going to compare some data across Alberta and British Columbia, Ontario and Saskatchewan to see how those provincial differences are expressed. Welcome back to the Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Again, today we're going to take a look at a report from uh, Headset and dive into what's happening with some Canadian cannabis sales starting with a total sales by Providence. So we can see that the population size doesn't directly correlate to cannabis sales, at least not last year. So while Headset uh, only reports on private sales in Ontario, which is 80% of sales, if provincial sales totals were proportional to population, Ontario sales would be more than three times larger than Alberta's. These discrepancies are likely related to the unique nuances and retail licensing timelines of each Providence. So category share of cannabis 2.0 categories, despite differences in distribution and retail structure, the new cannabis 2.0 categories have been universally popular, growing to about 20% market share through November 2020. However, some markets had more of a head start than others. So the first cannabis 2.0 sales by Providence, we can see that customers in Saskatchewan had access to cannabis 2.0 products nearly an entire month before customers in Alberta. First mover advantages, that definitely would help. Then cannabis uh, metrics by province, we can see that some big picture differences between provinces and and unsurprisingly, there's a significant difference that we'll drill down into the basket level as well. Here you can see that the Ontario market has significantly higher average basket sizes than any other province, more than 25% higher than uh, Alberta. All right, moving on to top cannabis products by brands. Taking a look at market share of the top five selling brands in each province, we can see some large differences in brand consolidation between the four provinces. For example, in the Ontario market, the top five brands own more than one third of the total market. So this is a much more consolidation than Alberta, uh, where the top five brands captured less than 25% of sales so far this year. And then finally, we're able to dive into exactly which brands uh, on top of each market. There's definitely some consistencies. For example, Redican, it's the best-selling brand in all provinces besides Alberta, but no single brand has held the top five positions in all four categories or all four provinces through 2020. So you can keep track of more. Follow us on the Talking Hedge to get all your updated cannabis information out of Canada with all of Headset's data. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.